Welcome back to Crawfordsville, Indiana on the campus of Wabash College where we are getting set to kick off the 125th Monon Bell Classic. It's just a beautiful atmosphere for this great game. And it's really not too bad with the sun out. There's former Indiana and Butler coach in his second stint as the head coach of DePaul, Bill Lynch. He's two and four in Bell games, 47 and 22 in his seventh season in Greencastle, one of the great men in college football. And Dan Morrell is in his third season and what success he's had after previously serving as an assistant at Wabash. He's 24 and 5, 72 and 64 in his 15th season overall as a college head football coach. Third and eight now coming up from the 21 on the first possession of the game. Reed from the gun, back to pass, throwing deep over the middle of the field. He's got a man, it's caught in stride by Ryan Thomas, and he's going to go the distance. Wabash on the board first with a big play on third and eight to take a 6 nothing lead in the Bell game. And there we go in the third play of the game, a big play. And you're right, Brad, uh, the safety was right there ready to make the play. I didn't see anything happening with it when the ball was in the air and then just under, under ran the ball and laid right in Thomas's hands. Nice play is defensively. Wabash looked kind of a little confused on offense. Not, not something we thought we'd see them go deep first play, and then third and long, and just a breakdown there between the safety and the corner. And that's a that's a backbreaker for DePaul early. But like you said, Kevin, it's only 52 seconds in, so a lot of game left. Reed looking deep, and he overthrows his man, and it's going to be picked off in the end zone by Dylan Hyatt. He'll bring it out of the end zone. 10, 15, 20. He's got more out to the 30. Still on his feet. Dancing down the sideline. Cuts it back up. Gets near midfield. And they'll say he stepped out of bounds just a bit earlier. But a huge play for the DePaul defense. Dylan Hyatt with the interception. He caught that ball outside of the end zone and ran, ran his way into the end zone. And smart not to just take an E, but to try to bring this thing out. And gosh, he did all the way to midfield. And what they tried with Rashawn Jones, what Wabash tried, it was a little uh, hitch and go, and I tell you, he didn't bite at all, and he just stayed deep. Play the game down in Greencastle. And now a fumble by Andrews, and it's picked up, and Wabash is running with it with daylight in front, all the way for a touchdown. Bishop Rhodes picks up the Andrews fumble and takes it to the house. And Wabash is now in front, 13 zip. And Rhodes on the run to scoop it and take it the distance. Right, neither offense doing a, a lot between the big play by Wabash and then the turnover by DePaul. And that, there's your score right there. And Bishop Rhodes, a senior, making that run. Back to pass. Andres throws towards the 10. Caught inside the 10, and it's going to be a touchdown. Blake Pichelny, no, they're going to mark him down just shy at the one-yard line. Stop, so fourth and goal. About a foot away. This time, Andres will try to throw it a floater in the corner, and it is caught by Andy Hunt for a touchdown. That is an incredible play call, but when you got an athlete like Andy Hunt, it's worth the risk. But he is going to one of the better football players in this game today. It's simple, though. Steve. This is why I'm not a college football coach. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> That's right. I would have done none of this that. This is why we have the headsets <laughs> yeah, absolutely. on. Absolutely. <laughs> Standing at his 42, and it's a bad snap. It's down on the ground. He still can't get a hold of it. It's loose, and either way, it's going to be Wabash football with great field position. And we're halfway through the second quarter. Uh, most of them gone Wabash's way so far, and then, you know, look at the scoreboard. It's going to reflect that, and that's no fun for a punter to be chasing <laughs> no. a bouncing ball back there because you know, even if you recover it. It's going to be Wabash's ball. The best you can do is fall on it and not allow them to advance. Austin Nightingale, a former quarterback, playing defensive back now. Snap is down. Kick is up from 25 yards. Skyler Narrick is good. Wabash 22. Andrews back to pass. Floating, looking, rolling, throwing on the run towards the end zone, and it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown! Michael Grace is in there in the middle of the crowd and comes out with it, and the Tigers with a huge play and a touchdown to potentially pull within three. Jake Tanner's 28th point after on 28 tries. Watch this one again. Great throw across his body back the other way. 
Jake Reed with Avant now in motion. Reed rolling to his right, all the way back to this 23-yard line, finds a man wide open in the end zone, and it's the tight end, Ivan Martinez. Only two catches all season, wide open for the Wabash touchdown. With a big finish to the first half with 12 seconds. Let's watch this one again, Jake Reed had retreated all the way back to about his 25-yard line. And Martinez just kind of, you know, went in like he was going to block, delayed, waited. Great job by him to wait to the last second before floating out in the flat. With Wabash with the ball, leading by 10. Reed back to pass. Good protection, throws toward the left sideline, and it's picked off. Second interception of the game for Dylan Hyatt, his first two of the season. Been a few balls in this game from both quarterbacks that just seem to hang in the air too long, and nine of, none of them have really fallen to the wrong hands, but that time Hyatt able to step in and get a huge pick and stop the momentum for Wabash. It was a two-man route. There were only two people out in formation. Everybody else was protecting, and you just got to make that throw. You don't want to throw it from the opposite hash all the way over here to this sideline, and I tell you what, uh, even though it was a pick, Wabash is very lucky, as you alluded to, Brad, because if he could have stayed inbounds, if he had another yard of inbounds real estate, uh, he would have gone to show. It was 79 yards to Ryan Thomas, third down here. Reed back to pass, throws over the middle, and this is deflected, and it's picked off. Off the hands of Rashawn Jones, and it is picked off by Brody Good. Paul with great field position. That's three interceptions. You don't see that very often in the Monon Bell game. A team is down 10. DePaul has to do something with this one. Yeah, right. And the great, great timing. See him sitting back there, and he saw the corner come from the outside. I think Jake Reed did and tried to throw it to the inside, but a little too far to the inside. Basically, he shouldn't have gone there. And you can see all the white jerseys around uh, number four, Rashawn Jones. Two fakes last year, same guy as the holder, it's Austin Nightingale. The pause certainly prepared for that as well. Snap is down, kick is up, plenty of leg, and it hits the uprights. No good. Third down and eight. Andrews back to pass, here comes the rush. Rolling to his right, gonna keep it. Down the right sideline, reaches for the marker, pushed out of bounds, it depends on the spot. He got inside the five, but where did he reach? Now Andrews hobbled ahead of a critical fourth and two from the four coming up. By the way, Tanner 14 of 18 this season on field goals. Snap down, kick is up, plenty of leg, and it is good. From the 20, fourth down and six. Reed back to pass, throws, and it's incomplete. Knocked down into Paul. He's going to get the football back with 2.06 to go. Just rushed the front four there. DePaul has to convert to keep their hopes alive. Andrews being chased, rolling to the right. He's in trouble, and he is out of bounds. Or did he scoop it inbounds? Either way, they're going to lose possession. If he stayed in bounds, it's an interception. Never looked like he felt really comfortable where he was trying to go and quickly ran out of bounds or ran out of room on the sideline. Yeah, to give credit to the front four there, it's, uh, pushing him out of the pocket. And he did get stretched out a little bit. He may get a little antsy feet, but at that point right there, Brad, is I think what you were, you were referencing. You just got to throw it up somewhere. For the final time, Jake Reed takes a knee. He will not need to take another snap for the ninth time in the last 10 years. The Wabash Little Giants have won the Monon Bell Classic. The 2018 version, a final. Wabash 24, DePaul 17. And the home fans can enjoy some sunshine on an otherwise very cold day in Crawfordsville.